Hey guys, it's Julie, and this is the Get Ready With Me. My Get Ready With Me's are meant to be a key, a discussion. You're allowed to comment along, comment as much as you want. I mean, some of y'all maybe, you know what? Don't worry about it. I love all of y'all, whether you agree with me, disagree with me, y'all don't even watch me, and somehow find me to come argue with me. Welcome! The Get Ready With Me is meant to be a reflective moment. This is not a well-researched, deep, hard-hitting video. This is meant to be a dialogue, a discussion, a moment to just talk about the things that are on top of my head with my girls and guys out there in my smart brown girl world. And hi guys, I see you. There is actually no hair to discuss this video. There's no weave sponsoring this. I am recording this Get Ready With Me for a third time, girl, because I want to be so precise with my Jackie Ina palette. You know, the Jackie, 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 Jackie. <laughs> I was actually sent the PR kit from Jackie Ina, so I got the whole little kit. I've done opened it already. Girl, do you peep the chrome nails? <laughs> ah, we fresh, we fly, it's hitting. And I also received the makeup bag. Now, as I said, this is my third time recording it. It's now 9.30 at night. Yes, I always record these videos when I have somewhere to go, somewhere to be. And I'm gonna do this video and then take a shower and wash all my makeup off. <laughs> I'm doing it so late tonight because I was like, yo, I'm realistically not gonna get it done tomorrow because I wanna do, I'm recording this on a Thursday night and I wanna do a Pop Snark Live tomorrow. And I know if I record a video with how you have to change the setup and everything, I'm just not gonna get around to doing the live. So in order to keep a commitment, this will probably go up after the Pop Stark Live and I hope I actually did it. Or I'm doing it, please clock me, girl. But to get to this palette, I'm a beauty guru, so I got this shit in PR, but I also have bought it. Once I got the email saying that I was gonna get the PR, and I was like, oh, beauty guru over here, sis. Uh, damn it, Wesley, who I do videos with, had hit me up because his girlfriend really wanted the palette, and so he got it from me. And I'm happy, happy, happy to make another smart brown girl happy and to help him, you know, do something for his girl. <laughs> Gabby loved it. But I was saying that I had posted an Instagram picture with this link, and I originally had used Wiggly, Supreme, and Pinker. And then I'm actually just gonna redo the same look that I had created in my re recording of this. But the video was just a little too all over the place, and I'm trying to be a little bit more thoughtful. But to start, I am going to use my Pat McGrath. Now, I bought the Pat McGrath Skin Fetish because Sephora is currently having a VIB Rouge Summer Save Sale. So, you absolutely got my little 15% off because this sucker is $68. And if you follow me on Instagram, which you totally should, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Julesy everywhere, sis. I was on the website trying to figure out what color I was. Well, actually, I carried my happy yellow behind all the way into Sephora because the Sephora in Charlotte this is, it's quite liquidy and runny, but look, the way this stuff applies to the skin is decadent. Let me find the focus. Focus back on me. Now, I know I should have bought it when I was in Houston because the summer sale was happening and the Houston Galleria Sephora um, has it in stock, but nobody in Charlotte is gonna have it in stock until after Labor Day. So when I went to Sephora, I just went to go get the, um, they do like a photo skin calculation. I forget what it's actually called to tell you what color you are and the foundations that they carry. And so I went and did that and it came back that I was color 23. And it was actually a young white lady who did my skin reading. And even she was like, I don't, I think that's a little too deep of a, of a color for you. She was both looking at it like, mm, I don't think that's it, sis. I put a lot of foundation on my forehead. But this this spreads great. It just goes on your skin and it just looks so radiant. As I was saying, the 23 was too deep for me. I don't know why it came back that render, rendering that like I was that brown. I mean, I do like to wear foundation, as I say, that makes my skin look more saturated. I like melanin. We, we grab every little bit of inch and ounce of it that we can get over here. The pictures on the website of the girl that was 23, and even for 21, the girl was just more deeper, was browner. I don't wanna say like, she wasn't dark skin particularly, she was just browner than me. And I was just kinda befuddled, and both on Sephora and Pat McGrath, the girl for 21 and 23 are both definitely brown skinned women. And so I hopped on YouTube to look at like reviews of the foundation, and I realized that even for 23, um, the women wearing it were more in my skin range. Sandra Deluxe, who I have met in real life, and so I know that we are in the same color range, wears 21. So I just was like, okay, I'm gonna order it online and gamble with 21. 
and I've actually been ha very happy with it because I can't really wear foundations now because my hair is so short that leave a big line of demarcation between my neck <laughs> and my face. Um, and the way this settles into my skin is much closer to my complexion and I am absolutely like positively in love. Now I also went and purchased the Fenty Pro Filter Concealer. I originally got it in 360, which is a little too close to my skin tone and I like my uh, concealer to be a bit brightening. So I went back in and exchanged it for 350, which I'm very happy with. Um, I had ran out of all my concealer. I had like two things of NARS and a whole thing of Tarte. The Tarte concealer that I like isn't carried at Sephora. I think it's like an Ulta exclusive. Tarte's low key racist anyway. NARS would be trying to $30 for like a little bit. And uh, the Fenty was $26 for a little bit more. You know, we talking a little bit, we talking like 0.4 fluid ounces, but I think we're gonna discuss two different topics. One, the fallout from my hypergamy video. Hmm. Girl, I don't know what video y'all watched, but um, I got another fringe movement angry, and I think that's what one of my really good skill sets here on YouTube is getting fringe black YouTube movements very angry. And I really, 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 really didn't want to talk about this Jackie palette and talk about any negativity. Oh, but then this Chelsea Worthy thing happened and I am, I'm gonna address that quickly because I have been a person who has definitely called out other people and brands here on YouTube and I do not necessarily believe in continually turning the other cheek. Okay, so Chelsea Worthy is the girl who does the trap tutorials. She has all those like edit, those animation edits with like the flames and usually a trap song and it's like whoosh. I actually think what she does is really, really dope. And I believe it went viral sometime in 2017. Now first, Manny MUA posted a video. Um, Manny MUA is always with the shits though. Um, but he posted a video that was very similar to the trap tutorial style. And then Patrick Starr posted a video that was also similar uh, to, or Chelsea considers similar to her trap tutorial style. I don't know how it exactly went down because I don't follow any of these people on social media. And I kind of saw it pop off on Twitter when she was tweeting about like, you know, going viral and then having people steal her style and then profit off of it. And she hasn't really gotten any opportunity even though she has a large following. Um, the beauty industry hasn't really paid much attention to her. And that's why she stopped doing so many um, trap videos because she just, you know, she's putting in all this effort and not getting a return. And girl, I feel that. We did a whole texture discrimination video back in 2015. I get it. Personally, I'm inclined to, as I see it in my humblest of opinions, and I don't think I'm necessarily right here, I think Manny MUA was absolutely wrong. I think his video was a direct co-opting of worthy style without at all acknowledging her, without reaching out, whatever. The Patrick Star, I don't really even want to quabble about whether or not it was a trap tutorial. I do think there is room. And I'm not trying to cape for Patrick because I think a lot of what's compounded the situation is that uh, Patrick kind of, he's done some questionable things. There's an ongoing thing about how he slides in and out of the space of like co-opting black woman style. And I haven't really, I don't really think there's a whole lot to say or to unpack there because it's a lot more complicated, right? And who's really investing and in trying to break it all the way down? I think my issue with it is that like, anything you can say about Patrick Starr, I just don't think we are universally applying it to everyone. And there's all these other people that you can point to, both black and non-black, similar kind of problematic actions as him, as him. And what part of it is really problematic? And how do we, like what is the solution? How are we gonna tell him the correct way to go about it? But I don't really think there's any point in like speaking out or knocking him down. You know, just kind of like, he, he leaves me with a question mark. And even with the video, I'm still kind of like question mark because there is room to say that other people inspire that because of the style, the song, he didn't take a trap song, he didn't use any animations. He did do like a style that I have seen other social media people like Brie Hall um, do 
and it's not like these people are necessarily taking their inspiration from worthy it's like i think there's a conversation to say about how many times can you reinvent the wheel and who do you actually like how do you ensure that you are acknowledging everyone who like is in the line of influence of how you got to the work you got to i think there's a conversation but I don't necessarily need to say that I don't think Worthy was unreasonable or wrong for feeling like Patrick's video was co-opting her style. And I actually think Patrick, according to the screenshots he posted, gave an apt response to her in that he DM'd her, he apologized, and he offered to help her get some brand deals via his agency. It is kind of like if your complaint is that you're not getting opportunity from the beauty industry, you know, and I think, you know, I did a video, I did a get ready with me about what do you do when the doorkeepers, like the people that give you the opportunity are not, are white women essentially. It kind of really is, I, I know we want to be like, oh, I'm super pro black and I'm, you know, I'm going to do everything via black people. But, you know, if Patrick is saying, hey, I have these connections, I would have actually said to reply to him, follow up with him and see if he was actually legitimate in what he was saying, if there was integrity in what he was offering and see if he does come through. Now, if he doesn't come through, after you responded, that's when I would say, you know, I've been patient, I tried to take people up on an offer, I tried to work with them on these things, and they still curb me because after my textual discrimination video, I did get hit up by brands and various people, you know, offering things and saying, hey, you wanna do right? And they were all full of shit, <laughs> you know? And after that, I can say, well, here are my receipts as to why I don't fuck with this person and I can really draw my line in the sand and say this person is absolutely wrong. I think kind of where it's when at this point, like there's not gonna be anything, there's no there's no real fallout that's going to be harmful to any of the people involved. And I I don't wanna like tell Worthy what to do because I get she has every right to be upset. That's my whole thing. The thing is, in order to get a lot of those big brand deals, you need an agent, you need an agency. And so uh, there, it's really difficult to do them on your own. And I guess you can make the argument that like because it's, it's Patrick's own agency, he would be profiting off of it but you're gonna sign with some agency and it would be better to start out working with him because you can kind of hold his his foot to the fire you can hold his hand to the fire versus getting in at an agency that's like signs you up and then forgets about you which is a lot of our experiences across the board as social media influence now there was further fallout because jackie commented on worthy's instagram posts and people are claiming that she gas lit she was gaslighting Worthy. And Worthy then also commented that she was disappointed in Jackie's response. And, and Jackie ended up, you know, disabling, temporarily disabling her Instagram, or not her Instagram, her, I will say one of the harshest things about being on a social media influencer, it really isn't like, a, for, especially for black women, and I did a video with Akila a few years ago where I talked about this. It doesn't really hurt when white people come after me, right? When white people come after you and say what they gotta say, you can call me the N-word with the E-R at the end. You can say all sort of racist stuff to me. It, that doesn't hurt me as much as when other black women, especially other black women, who I think any other setup, we would probably get along fine. When other black women are lambasting me, when they're attacking my character, when they're attacking my personhood, when they're attacking my appearance, it hurts when it comes from your own community and it comes from people that look like you and move like you. And there is a brigade of women who are perceived as intellectuals on Twitter who consistently participate in shading and being snarky against Jackie. And I understand how hurtful that is. But let's get into this palette. We're gonna go with sponsor, which I've already started using. We're gonna hit ginger in the in the in the crease. And it's hurtful because these aren't like trolls necessarily. These aren't people that you can just dismiss. But it's petty. And I think even when and I said this before about Jackie, even when they have a, a like an actual critique that's valid, it always so quickly mirrors into like a petty, like really under the skin personal attack. And you lose the teaching opportunity. You lose the moment where like what you're saying actually could reach someone and be like, okay, sis, I get it, but this is how you do better versus 
telling someone that they look like an animal or something. And because it doesn't come from a place of love and compassion. It doesn't really come from a place of I want to see you do better and make better decisions. It comes from a place of scarcity politics and let me knock you down because I think I have power over you and I have power over you because I can say that I don't do this. And then we set these objectives that are just unreachable and untenable for anyone to actually be able to survive us. There's a thing called scarcity politics where you basically do this one upsmanship of people and say, oh, uh, I've never done this. So I'm canceling you. I'm getting rid of you because you made this mistake and it's a mistake that I've never had. But then it's a continual hamster wheel, right? Because you can always knock someone down and say that I'm saying what you're doing is wrong and so we need to cancel you out. We need to not fuck with you at all. I, since reading Killing All the Normies, have definitely tried to walk away and step back from relying so much on from relying so much on cancel culture because where do all the cancel people go? Especially when they're powerful people. Like when you cancel all the powerful people, they just migrate their power over to another area. It ties into so many other things that I think of and believe in about finding different ways to meet resolution, to net out resolution. So I get Jackie's defensiveness when this Twitter brigade constantly pops back up. But I will say, I don't actually think she was gaslighting worthy. She made a comment, it's an NGL, which means not gonna lie. I didn't see Patrick Starr's tutorial as giving trap tutorial vibes at all. And her comment really read to me as if she was just explaining to the girl why she posted it. Like why she with her large platform proceeded to amplify something that people are arguing as co-opting another black woman. And it makes sense that, yo, another black woman is saying that she's gonna stop producing the great content she produces because of someone who not only did I promote, but they're using my product in the video and explaining why maybe in that moment she didn't say something to Patrick, right? I mean, you'd literally just say, hey sis, I didn't, I didn't even think chop tutorials, like my bad, but I wanna tell you that I would never ever participate in co-opting another black woman intentionally and I don't want you to stop because I think what you have to offer is great and I will put labor behind my words to amplify you. I also think it's very hurtful for Jackie because she, I mean I've said this before and you know I could acknowledge my own bias because I'm one of the people that behind the scenes Jackie supports and she does a lot for a lot of us like a lot of us which is why even you know people want to keep bringing up like the same like missteps and being like oh Cancel Jackie Aina. And it's like, look girl, sis does a lot for a lot, a lot of us. It is like a genuine support. And it's like, it means so much when someone of her status supports you without you having to ask them or without you having to reach out. You know, oh, I'm putting Glossier concealer on my eyes. Uh, makes it pop a little bit more. I don't really do a cut grease. I really just do this to help the color stick. I think some of you more professional girls put powder on top of your eyes. We about to wash this all off. So we're just gonna go in with Sponsor, which is a cute, 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 cute green color. And I'm gonna have to buy another one of these palettes because I feel like I'm really gonna use this palette up. I do wish that Jackie had not reposted that girl who didn't add her as tweet. One of the hardest things about being an influencer is receiving hate, especially when you're doing the exact opposite and you're putting a lot of work and time and sacrifice in ways that people really don't understand. And somebody says something in a hateful manner that is a direct assault to the sort of sacrifice you have taken on that people are not acknowledging you for and how that can really, really, really hit a nerve. But I, you know, I think the lesson that we all learn and it's, it's a lesson we all learn but we have a really hard time maintaining is not responding to those very triggering comments. And especially because people will say these things and find covert ways to say them. And it's always, even if the person does at you, it'd be like, well, well all you got going on, well, everyone in your DMs, you, everyone in your notifications, you somehow find me. And it's double dubious if they don't, if they don't at you to find them and say something. You have to constantly remind yourself, don't engage. You see it, whether someone might at you in the mentions, whether someone might quote tweet it and at you, you find it some way because somebody puts it into your realm and then you wanna say something and you like literally the best thing you could do for yourself is not say anything and unfortunately Jackie did say something and that would be the one thing I wish I legit cannot find my blending brush I don't know where I put it down at but it's just it's literally disappeared whatever um we're gonna go back in with credit no we're not gonna go back in with credit 
Wait, okay, we put it on our brush. We're gonna dab it in, but that's what we didn't. We didn't mean to do that. We didn't wanna do that. No, we're gonna dab it off. Okay, we're gonna dab it here. Okay, and then we're gonna clean the brush off because what we meant to go in was with big wig. Yeah, I, but as I was saying, I don't think Worthy was wrong for voicing her frustration and calling people out. I just think it's unfortunate that now the conversation has transversed to, oh, Jackie and Worthy versus like, nobody's talking about Manny MUA. Like the worst defender out of everyone, you can say what you wanna say about Patrick, you can say what you wanna say about Jackie, but the worst defender out of everyone, Manny? But I think it's just at the point that like, Manny's always in some drama. Like most of us black women don't pay attention to him anyway. So like, Council what? Like we've already kind of not checking for him. Anyhow, I'm about done my face. Well, I'm done my eyes. We did a little bit of a look. We're gonna put some eyeliner on. Oh, I put a uh, clear brow gel on my eyes from Anastasia Beverly Hills. I got it as my um, Sephora point. I'm thinking, you know, I have such dark brows already. Why am I using a brow gel? Doesn't really make sense. So I actually like this clear one a lot. I wanna put eyeliner on, but girl, we finna wipe, wash this all off our face. We can't put, we don't, we don't need to put no, mm -mm. we gonna powder down, put some highlight on. Let's do a little bronzer on the palette. We have a little time, we have a little time. Okay, but that's that on that. My last video, uh, where I titled it, Hypergamy is Not the Solution, a video in which I discussed hypergamy in response, which was commented as a solution to my video in which I talked about how marriages benefit black women. Um, the comments on it, woo girl, I did not realize that that fringe movement was, I'm trying to find a nice way to describe it, but I'm short for words, sis, but I'm gonna leave it at that. I'm realizing that that movement is very, very young, very young, largely, um, and it is always kind of amusing to find, well, they're both young, and then like, man, I don't wanna characterize it as, like particular just because like I, people are in the comments and it's like the same people commenting over and over again. Like that was like the, mo the one of the wildest cases of like selective hearing. I think a lot of people were commenting based on the title. I think people kind of like started the video, scrolled, stopped, scrolled. A lot of people were connecting my talk about meeting people where they are and leaving them there as if I was suggesting that meeting broke dudes, but like if I say meet people where they are and leave them there, how does that mean that you are building up a black man? That a broke black man, a, a, a dust bucket black man. Like how does that, how is that counseling black women to end up in marriages with dusties? Comprehension? Hmm. Can't find it. Yeah, it was just really weird. And I like, I went back, I watched the video. I watched the video with my homeboys with Lay Nigga. And I was just like, what, what has gotten these women in a tizzy? Like, how does counseling black women to invest in their emotional maturity, acknowledging that it's not easy, and saying, you know, talking about vulnerability and compassion and respect, and what are, what is the legacy you actually want your household to have you know we're ever evolving people people change you know, like there are all these other variables to like to counsel black women on the idea that one they need to focus on marrying up a social class because that is what hypergamy actually means and i think the issue is that you are okay let me let me backtrack here I'm gonna end up doing a whole video on hypergamy because it is ridiculous and the fallout from that is really, really sad. Like to have people say, patriarchy is never going to end, so I'm just gonna manipulate it to my <laughs> to my favor. I don't even think people know what they're saying. I don't even think they understand. I do not watch YouTubers who do not show their face. I personally think there's something slightly unethical about, about the idea of counseling, selling, promoting ideals and not being able to stand physically and firmly in your belief. It's just wild that people think I'm encouraging folks to date dust buckets <laughs> or to build up a black man. Like that is like, I don't even think people know what black, the tenets of black feminism are. To accuse me of being too much in the books, to not having any street sense or common sense. It's like, you can find me. <laughs> you won't roll up on me, sis? You won't roll up on me? You don't think I got no street sense? You, th you think I'm not good <laughs> wherever I go? Please, try again. Like, I'm, I'm really not that one. But you, you are more than free to find me in person and try me. Fear-mongering that I'm a pick-me. You know, I think the best thing I could ever do for myself coming to my dating life was really get to the point of being okay 
with being alone, with being good, with being with me. And that's what I talk about, like the diverse range of relationships. It's not that, you know, and I, I can say so I'm blowing out my face and people won't hear it. It's not to say that you shouldn't get married or that you shouldn't partner or you shouldn't find the relationships that work best for you. And it's also, you know, more specifically, let me say on track here. It is to say that we should have a diverse range of relationships because I think a lot of us are grappling with the fact that like any ideal that we have been sold on as black women and how to partner does not, it'll fit like a handful of us, but there's a lot of us that are left out. So how do we find what's best for us? And I think part of the problem is we have very singular relationship models that we're being sold on. And the truth is some of us don't want to be in relationships. Some of us don't want to be married. Some of us don't want to be mothers. And we have all these sort of language around relationships that says that if you don't fit into this very binary mold, you're not good. And I'm just saying, let's break this understanding that there's a singular binary mold for everyone. I can't tell you what all the other diverse molds are supposed to look like. All I can tell you is to work on your emotional maturity, to be the person, the best person that you wanna be, and that you then can create the world and set the proper boundaries and harness your vulnerability, your femininity, your masculinity, whatever, and create the world that you wanna create. And I don't have to sell you on anything. I don't, have a, I don't have to tell you to go buy anything, to feed into any materialistic or veneer of yourself in order to get the things that you want to get in life now when it comes to hypergamy it's like i don't even think people know the word that they're using and like what the etymology of that word is and i think it's just very disingenuous to sell this as an idea that is somehow going to liberate or even make as a whole black women more comfortable and i get it like i, I do have the understanding that everyone is not going to participate in the revolution girl i get that I'm gonna take Becca, uh, Lilac Geode, Geode. There's just a lot of things with it, right? Like the etymology of the word, uh, people accusing me, oh, some girl was going real hard about, well, you must be saying you want, you trying to tell black women to date dust buckets and I'm, I don't want no struggle love. Like how does emotional maturity end you with struggle love? Like, do you understand? Like if you're emotionally mature, you definitely not dating the nigga at Bojangles. Okay, no. Like emotional maturity, like, it's just, it's weird because it doesn't make sense. How are you slandering black women for being single? You don't know nothing about my partnership. You don't know nothing about who I've dated and who I have not dated to make assumptions. People don't really wanna work on themselves. So this one girl was commenting on everything about why well, I'm encouraging black women to date dust buckets because I only talked about hypergamy and I didn't take, talk about hypogamy. Well, okay, what about isogamy? Like there's like, you wanna throw around these words that you don't even know the meaning of, the history of, the etymology of, and I'm simply responding to comments on a, a video that I have and I'm not responding to this narrative that faceless women on YouTube are selling because I don't like y'all literally named a bunch of YouTubers that I have never in my life heard of and I'm not fitting to watch like I'm good I also like the fact that uh Rico Nasty is on Vogue's YouTube channel and she like myself bathes in her setting spray <laughs> love it also got the Fenty Fussy I don't know where my Fenty glow is I need to find it because that's my favorite but this Fenty Fussy is a really cute pink that I, I just love the consistency and the texture of our glosses. Very cute, dress cute. All right, I'm gonna put a lash on because you guys deserve it. All right, F it, we're just gonna put Trust Me Try It on because that's what we have here. Velour, my favorite Sephora girl. I'm gonna be buying these suckers when they're on sale. This lit though, I love it. I'm not even gonna put nothing. Sometimes I fill it in with like another lip, like I'll do like a real purpley. I, I love to put like a magenta in it sometimes, but I'm gonna leave it like this. It's just, it's just dubious to encourage black women to participate in the same systems that oppress us. And I mean, sure, I'm not gonna argue you down about whether or not you can eradicate you'll see the eradication of patriarchy in your lifetime. I think it's unreasonable to suggest that the system will not be dismantled. I do think it's unreasonable to suggest that you can't do anything to dilute it, at least in your household. There's no way to manipulate patriarchy for your benefit without participating in patriarchy and therefore oppressing other women from the same community you come from. It is very precarious to elevate your social class. Um, if you actually understand what that means and you actually understand what social classes are, it is a very precarious position to be in to elevate your social class and not be able to bring your family up with you. And because we live in America and because of the way our 
our economy is structured and it is a capitalist society, it is very easy for things to change. And there's a thing called network poverty. Money. You can partner with someone who makes a lot of money and I don't know why there is this belief that if you divorce you are going to absolutely have access to that money. Oh I want to do this the way Candace did it. Okay. Candace says to take a mirror. I'm going to link to Candace's IG video where she explains this because it was a really good concept. She said to put the mirror under you. Oh girl look. If you're not talking about elevating a social class then you're not talking about hypergamy. You have every right and I don't know what y'all think I do in dating. <laughs> You have every right to want to date someone who is in the same social class as you, who has the same earning potential as you, who can offer financial stability, who has the same sort of education as you. I don't, you know, I've never dated someone who doesn't have a college degree. And I don't feel bad about that. This really was a good tip, Candice. You did this, this. I have never applied a lash so well in my life. The best thing I could do for myself in the context of a relationship was really think about who I was and what I wanted to add to my household and the values that I wanted my household to be. And I, there is no way that you are an emotionally mature, myself being educated and having all the access that I do that I did not think about the financial well-being of my household, but also realizing that I was not going to be codependent on, a, on an individual to do that, but that we were both smart enough and had the means to keep a financially stable household and that we can more so than just him making, you can make 60K and your mate make 90K and y'all still be in the same social class. That does not make your relationship hypergamous just because he makes 30K more than you. You also have to define what social class he is and what access he has and what means and modes and all the all this, all this other stuff that goes into actually elevating a social class. And I will tell you, any black person who has elevated from working in middle class to, to upper middle and upper class will tell you that one of the hardest things and in the kind of wealth that you have to accumulate in order to bring your entire family up with you is a constant burden because of the lack of access and equity that the black community has. And as I was saying earlier, I want to say that I did realize that and I do, I'm well aware that every cultural revolution that has happened throughout society was not like all the people were down for it. You know, like there was a time when people thought that slavery was never going to end, including people who were in bonds, who were like, I'm not fitting to revolt. I'm not fitting to do anything. I'm fitting to do what I need to do to keep my head down and stay alive and not get beat at this point and live life as comfortably as I possibly can. And did things like be become, you know, black slaves did become overseers and participated in slave catching and did whatever they had to do in order to, they would participate in the same system of slavery in order to mitigate the suffering that would happen for them. I, I mean, I can't make you acknowledge what you're doing, but you can't, you can't talk me down or argue me down from pointing out that you are particip participating in the same systems that oppress you and oppress your community in order to sort of somehow mitigate that in your personal life. And you know, whatever that means for you is whatever that means for you. It's kind of crazy to think that like I am pushing black, to suggest that I'm pushing women into, black women into a life of struggle. When we all sing the praises of Toni Morrison, um, when we understand what it means to be a witness because of James Baldwin. I'm not telling a bunch of black women that they need to be these radical culture shifters, but I am, heightening the awareness into how we feed into the same systems that we oppress us. If you take issue with that, bless your heart. We are not dealing with the same patriarchy that we dealt with in 1960, in 1970, or 1980, right? There are ways to mitigate the way in which it impacts you without participating in it. And part of shifting culture is raising awareness. That's that on that. We'll do a whole video on it because I got so much more to say. I just gotta figure out what point do I want to start at because there's just so many things. So many things and it's so crazy but I think the best thing I could do is get this book club popping because I think that will help with a lot of the education. Oh man, people telling me that I'm too into the books is such a wild comment to be made but okay, sorry for trying to be informed. <laughs> My bad. Anywho, thanks for watching. I hope you like this look. It's a sleigh. Deuces!